Hello friend, this is Rupesh and I'm watching CBNet's video series on C++ multi-threading and this video is the second part of object pool because first part I created without using any threading or stuff. There you just see the theory part why you should create a thread pool and a basic code implementation where it was not using any threading. So it was just taking the object from the object pool and it was just simply returning back. But in this video we'll see how you can query the same thread pool using different threads. So don't get confused. This is object pool video with multiple threads, meaning multiple threads will try to access the same thread. I mean object pool. So let's get started. We have, let's say this is your object pool. You have these objects inside the pool and you have many threads T1, T2, T3, T4. There they will ask for these objects and after using these objects in these threads they will return back to the pool so these objects will go back so how i have simulated this it's just every thread will try to acquire the object 15 times i mean this is the limit i mean if it will not be the limit then this whole program will never terminate okay so that's why i'm keeping that limit so the whole flow goes like this you have object pool construction where you will give like how many objects you want to construct in the object pool. So for now I will be giving three here and then number of threads. So that we will give if we'll give three then at any moment of time every thread can have one object. But if we will increase this number let's say we are asking to create four threads but objects are less than the threads, then in that case we will have a miss because it is possible that a last thread is asking some object and there is no object in that. So I have covered that part also, so don't worry. So now let's look at the code snippet. And yeah guys, I'm telling you, if you are new to the object pool video and you have not watched my previous video, you should consider watching that video first because there I have actually explained like why would you go for all these techniques. Now let's see how we'll do this. See, this pool is getting constructed with three objects. So let's go to that part. We are saying size of the pool is going to be three. This is pool dot push. We are constructing this object with I meaning zero, one, two, if just three objects are there and pushing into this pool queue. So we have a pool queue here, which will take object class as the elements. And let me show you the object class here this is your object class it's very simple so object construction i mean object pool construction is done so this is done now let's create threads here we are creating threads number of threads are let's say five then we'll create five threads and we are sending this pool okay so this pool is like already created we are sending this pool to all the threads okay so this is your thread here i told you right 15 times we'll keep on trying and this is what we will print if we could not get the object. So pool dot acquire the object. And now, I mean, you might be thinking that where is that mutex and stuff? Actually, mutex is inside the acquiring object function. So if you see this, the first thing we do is try to log the mutex. And in release case also, we try to log the mutex. So basically what mutex is doing, you know, you have objects here and you have many threads here. It is possible that this thread is also trying to get and this is also trying to get at the same time. Now, as this is just a single pool, we should not allow different different threads like this is T1 and this is T2 to actually modify this single resource at the same time because you might return the same object to both the threads or you might just mess up the whole counter and stuff. So it is always better to use mutex here. I mean, this is the classical case. So before when you try to get the object or when you are pushing the object in both the cases you should lock the mutex so we are actually locking locking the mutex not locking the mutex so i don't know maybe these fonts are a little smaller let me know in the comment section i'll take care from the next time onwards and now let's come to this this is your thread from here to here yeah so this is thread it will try to acquire the mutex sorry object it got the object. Now we are simulating some work is being done. This is kind of a random and then we'll release the object and every thread will do this 
you will acquire it and release it. It's very simple. I have already explained you. Let's run the code now. I'll compile this code and we'll try to run this. See, it is running. Let me take this into the middle. And if you'll see this, it says object pool constructed. It constructed three objects in that. And then these three different threads acquired different, different objects here. I'm just printing what I passed here when I was constructing the object, that object had some kind of ID here because I was passing 0, 1, 2, right? So this 0, 1, 2 is that. And then there are many failures. You can see, right? Many threads could not get the object just because we have only three objects in the pool, but there are five threads. That's why at some point of time, you will not get object. Let me create the same like three threads here. Then we'll not see this case. I will compile this. And if I will run this, you will notice that that particular case where it is missing won't come because the number of threads are actually equal to the number of objects in the pool. And see, it is quite random. It is telling that, okay, this thread 933000 first released the object number two and acquired the object number zero. And this 7001 actually released the object one and acquired the object two. So the main goal of this video is to show you that, okay, accessing the pool object using thread is covered in this video, if this is what you was looking for. And the important part is when you are trying to acquire the object, that time you lock the mutex, then only you do your stuff. And now you might be wondering like, okay, where is that unlocking part? Actually that unlocking happens automatically when this lock object is going to get destructed. So now no need to write the unlock part here. Okay. Because I'm not doing something like mutex dot lock. Then I have to write mutex dot unlock. But here we are using unique lock and providing the mutex to that lock. And then it will automatically try to lock at the same line here and will deallocate. I mean, unlock when we are completing this function. So I think we are done with the video. Thanks for watching guys. And if it helped you, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe and share with your friends. It will help them and me both. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next videos. Bye bye. Take care. Now, no need to write the unlock part here. Okay. Because I'm not doing something like mutex dot lock. Then I have to write mutex dot unlock. But here we are using unique lock and providing the mutex to that lock. And then it will automatically try to lock at the same line here and will deallocate, I mean, unlock when we are completing this function. So I think we are done with the video. Thanks for watching guys. And if it helped you, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe and share with your friends. It will help them and me both. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next videos. Bye bye. Take care.